Welcome back to FMG Ping. My name is Mark, and today is going to be the first of a series of videos about building an EcoBox doubler. Okay, so in this video, basically, what we're going to be doing is getting the donor parts for our EcoBox doubler out of this NP241C uh, transfer case to put it in front of this NP205 from a Ford. Now, before we get too, too far into it, uh, what we're basically doing is building a gear reduction box that sits in front of the transfer case and gives us an ultra low gear. Like, you ever see those videos of guys who put their rigs in ultra low, they get out and the rig basically drives without them. They, it's like a walking pace up a trail. That's kind of what we're doing, except for what I'm trying to do is get myself um, better gearing options, as well as being able to do front and rear digs um, if needed, because I don't have rear steer. It'll help me kind of pivot around obstacles and stuff like that, but we're getting too far into the weeds. All right, but let's get back to the task at hand. What we're going to be doing is uh, scavenging uh, or harvesting uh, this NP241C, which is a Chevy trans uh, transfer case, for its pinion, um, its planetary gear set, uh, and a couple some snap rings and a couple other things. Um, because in theory, when I crack this open, there should be a six pinion planetary gear set which in which kind of upgrades the amount of strength in the planetary gear set the more planetary gears you have the more that force is distributed uh the better you're off now you can use an np 231 jeep uh transfer case gear set out of a 231 if you have one lying around the only difference is is most jeeps come with a three pinion planetary gear set and you can always add those in i think as long as the planetary gear set is uh machined to have them you can actually add those after the fact, but this is everything I pretty much need in one stop shop with the exception of the input shaft, which because I am running in a Jeep AW4 automatic transmission, I do need the, um, the input shaft from that to made up to the box. Now I'm going to get that separate, a uh, couple guys in my neighborhood or in my name in my neighborhood or in my area have them kicking around. So for a couple bucks, they're going to get me one and that way I'll have everything I need to build the box once it arrives. All right, so the first order of business to kind of get this going, make sure you drain all your fluid. This one has pretty much been drained. I might get some residual stuff out, but I still have a pan to catch everything. Um, now we're gonna take off the 15 millimeter uh, tail housing bolts and get going here. this off boom Yahtzee all right so once you get the tail shaft off there's this snap ring here um, I like using these um, I forgot what these are called there's special kind of um, snap ring pliers that work really really well and uh, it makes short work of these let me just kind of show you boom Yahtzee Make sure you put all these um, these retaining things to the side. You might end up using those. So I'll cover that in a second. But now we're going to work on getting this um, this housing off. This should be what four five four um, four thirteen millimeter bolts. After we get this snap ring out, that which we just did. So I think we gotta pry this one. Am I missing something here? Okay. So there are pry points here, here, and some over here. Just find one that works for you. Just slowly start prying. I gotta push it down. Here we go. Oh, 
Oh. That's not a good sign. That's really not a good sign. Alright, so now we flip this around. We're going to take off these 10 millimeter bolts and get this retaining housing out. Pry off this cover. Should be a little hole right here. Oop. Sorry about that. Okay, just be gentle. Don't mar that up too, too much. This is aluminum. Pull that off to the side. All right, so now there's going to be a snap ring right here. We're going to use our... I forgot what these are. Once I figure them out, I'll try to put them on the screen. But these things are amazing. They work so, so well. I'm going to spin it around one more time. There's 11 15 millimeter bolts all the way around. We're going to go ahead and zip those off. Okay, so now we're on to the shaft here. We have a snap ring again. This is low, this is locking on the speed sensor wheel. Once again, we'll use our handy dandy hog nose pliers. Is that maybe what they're called? Spear gear comes right off. And there's another, another snap ring that goes against the oil pump here. Come on. Come on. We're so close. Come on. <laughs> Why are you being a pain? Huh? Why are you being a pain? There we go. And now to find the pry points. There's one right here. There's usually a couple kicking around. Another one on the other side. And we're going to work those free. Yeah, I got a little ahead of myself. Let's separate the case now. A little bit further. Normally you want to separate the oil pump, the tube and everything. That's probably toast. So now on the output for the front, there is another snap ring right there. We're going to go ahead and pull this. Oops. Ooh, some tension on that one. Okay. And this all should be able to be removed as a unit. Okay. 
All right, so just make sure your gear selector is all the way down, and then that way you can pivot this out. Gear selector. I'm gonna grab our planetaries. Or I think there's a snap ring here. Where is it? Oh, there we go. Here's our six gear planetaries. On the Jeep, there's only three. So this is an upgrade. Got more, more surface area. Fun is. All right, so this is what we're left with so far. The gear said that the planetary rides in, or the race here, has a, um, this is pressed in, but it's also held in with um, a snap ring. So we're gonna have to go ahead and get that out. Hopefully I can get this one out. This is, big, this is a big boy. I forgot. Can't really use these two too much. Uh, I'm gonna have to use a screwdriver and pry this out. If I can find it, it's buried here somewhere. What the heck did I do with it? No way. No way. Two hands. Now this is pressed in and the next phase of this is we actually have to cut the casting to relieve the pressure to relieve the pressure so we can get this gear set out in an effort to get that gear out of the case which it's pretty well pressed in we're gonna make a couple of relief cuts basically across the top here on the face here and then basically right across if you can see where my, my mark is it's right here so we're going to cut into here, but you got to be super careful. Once you get to the, toward this face, this is where the gear is. It's probably, yep, you can kind of see it where it's recessed. That's where the gear sits. So you're pretty much open, open until you get to about here. And then you got a nice feather it in. It's better to kind of like just score it. And then we can kind of uh, crack it open without damaging the ring gear um, inside. So we're gonna go nice and slow while I cut this thing. Um, I'll probably put you on a time lapse out of the way so I don't ruin the camera, but basically uh, go nice and slow, little by little. Ooh, it's messy, I got aluminum everywhere. So once you get it cut, it, you're gonna have to kind of do it, you know, cut, hammer, cut, hammer. You just gotta keep loosening it up. Now, if on this side you can see, I didn't cut all the way through, but I was able to get right in here, at this uh, right above this vein here, and drive a nice big uh, chisel through, and I was able to separate the aluminum. I just gotta do a little, little bit more cutting on this side. I probably gotta score a little bit more here and cut into this uh, piece here, and uh, that should be it for this. So now that we got the case all disassembled, 
You can go ahead and kind of move through the parts that we do need and the parts that we don't need. Get rid of all this. Okay. Get rid of this. All right, just want to do a quick update now. I had already finished editing the video. However, I read ahead on uh, the assembly instructions and found out that I was missing a piece that wasn't necessarily covered in the disassembly for the Northwest Fab Eco Box. So I just want to cover that now. Um, so we'll go through all the pieces that we're going to need. We're going to need the shift assembly. We're going to need the retainer. We're also going to need the input bearing. Now this part I didn't cover. Um, I might reuse this, I might not. I gotta see what the how detrimental this uh, seal is. I might just go get a whole brand new bearing, but just in case yours comes out in one piece, you could probably reuse this if it's in good shape. Also going to need the input, whoops, sorry, the input snap ring, the input shaft, as well as the metal thrush washer, the plastic thrush washer, there's another plastic thrush washer in here. And I don't want to break it, but let's try to wiggle it loose. There we go. Just like that. You're going to need your planetary gears. And then you're also going to need, if I can get this out of here, your ring gear. Okay? So that should be everything you need, uh, but it does go without saying, hold on to your uh, donor transfer case just in case I might have missed something. And then that way, when you go to assemble your Northwest Eco Box, you have the parts you need kind of right there in the, wherever you put them. I wouldn't go throwing them out or giving away just yet. Just like I said, make sure everything's uh, assembled and functioning before you do. But this was just a quick overview of what you would need to do to break down that donor box to harvest the parts you need. And with that being said, catch you on the next one.